In this video we're going to talk about a hidden gem, an adventure game from 1993 called Companions of Zenth. If you're a fan of adventure games from the 90s and haven't heard about this one, that's not surprising. The point and click games that get all the action are LucasArts and Sierra games, but Legend Entertainment, they did some cool stuff. Companions of Zenth was actually the first big box game I ever got. I got it as a birthday present from my mother back in 1993. So, although I enjoy the classics, this was always one I remembered with happy nostalgic feelings. Legend Entertainment is a company that spun off Infocom in 1989 and in their beginnings, they thrived with text adventure games. Companions of Zenth was the first game from Legend to use a CD-ROM and their new engine with mouse support, both implemented as technology advanced. Legend's biggest and most acclaimed release back in the early 90s was Eric the Unready, another adventure game that received several awards while Zenth was a solo project from programmer Michael Lindner. Although it was lauded for its comedy, it wasn't very well received by the critics, so maybe that's the reason the game is not so well known, besides being overshadowed by all the competition plus Legend's own games. One of the things that Legend banked on was licensing popular book series, and Zenth is one of those. It's based on a book by Piers Anthony called Demons Don't Dream. Actually, this book was included with some of the versions of this game. To experience this game, we're using the rust bucket with the tomato board and the AM5X86 CPU. We're also using a Sound Blaster AWE64. Originally, I wanted to use the Roland SC55 to emulate MT32 for MIDI, as the game supports it, but the game expects a dedicated device for the use of MPU-401 instead of looking for the Sound Blaster implementation of it. That's related to the early use of MIDI generators and I haven't found a fix for this, but let me know in the comments section if you have any ideas. One of the things that's striking is the quality of the box art. The Companions of Zenth logo is stamped everywhere in gold colored lettering, the drawings on the box are really colorful and well done. Inside the box, there's a hard paper manual with basic instructions, the game is very simple to install and run on DOS, so it's sufficient. There's also a catalog of the other games in a leaflet, I always find these things amusing, cool to read about the other games of the company and the marketing of the time. The CD also has nice drawings with the game characters on it. Overall, you can really tell it's a quality package, and with the cost of 60 US dollars in 1993, which roughly equates to 110 dollars of today's money, it wasn't cheap, so quality is appreciated. Believe it or not, at this point in production, more than half the week had gone by. As I only work in the videos at night, it took several days to get the system ready, figuring out the configurations I was going to use, and at this time, everything was ready to go for capture but it had gotten a bit late and it was time to go settle for the night to get ready to capture in the next day. A positive thing of working on these projects too late at night is that my ride home from the lab is quite fast. Since humanity entered this new stage of cosmopolitan living after 11 pm, there really aren't any cars on the streets and I can ride home feeling like I'm in a post-apocalyptic world in an empty city. It's the next day and I'm ready to show you this wonderful game and it begins with an introduction of the motivations for the story, being it a bet between demons. The bet consists in each demon picking a human to join the land of Zenth and running after a prize. What is wagered is not revealed at this time. You start the game in your house. In this game, your character doesn't like computer games. Ha! <laughs> what a joke. But you, Doug, is challenged by your friend to play the game with a simple bet. If you don't like the game, you get his motorcycle. If you like it, he gets your girlfriend. This is a terrible agreement here, but you find out real soon that your GF doesn't really want to stay with you, so apparently she might already be with the bozo. To get to Zenth, you need to pick one of the companions, and it seems there are multiple choices, but there really is just one. If you pick the wrong one, you get killed instantly in the game. You need to pick the same as in the book, so it's kind of helpful if you have already read it. Speaking of the book, it does help to have read it. Several of the puzzles of the game are described in the book, although many things are slightly changed maybe to make it a bit easier for the programmer, and if you haven't read it, it's okay. They even included a compendium in the game with a bunch of information about the world of Zenth. The plot basically entails that you have to run through the game as fast as possible to get to the prize. But as this is a point and click game, mostly without a timer, there really isn't a rush. 
but the whole idea does give you a sense of urgency. So you go out doing tasks for inhabitants of the world of Zenith in exchange for information. Your basic goal is get to the magician Humphrey, he is supposedly the most knowledgeable character in Zenith and he'll tell you how to get to the prize. I'll share some of my favorite puzzles with you at this time, so prepare for spoilers. The first bit of interesting puzzle is getting a magic runaway pail. Unless you get it, it won't let you go through. In the book, it's as simple as asking your companion to get it, but in the game, it's a bit more complicated than that. You need to do a favor for one of the inhabitants of the city of Isthmus. The city is plagued with a censorship. It's a real ship that spreads sensory incense. Yeah, this game is filled with puns, gotta learn to enjoy that. So you need to get rid of the ship. For that, you steal its anchor and rope and use it to undo a log jam on the stream. Give the log to the woodworker so he can make a plank, make a catapult with the plank to launch a rock into the pail. So now you got the pail. But although you got it, you need to finish the business with the censorship. So you make a potion oriented by a recipe given to you by the fairy, enough, <laughs> another character in the game, and finally find a way to throw that into the censorship. Soon after this, you get to a labyrinth. The labyrinth of rooms is impossible to navigate with what you see in the picture. It's then that you need to realize that there is a map and you can use it to navigate, then it becomes an easy task. Now while you're in the labyrinth, a demon kidnaps your companion and you find her in her natural state. Interesting artwork here. The next interesting puzzle is offered to you by a troll. Really simple but entertaining. After you do a minor task to help him get a key, he makes you choose between three puzzles. The one I got was a set of challenges that involved making boxes with matchsticks with a set number of moves. I had fun with this one. The other two involve moving a big box to another position in a confined space, and the last one is about fading all Tetris pieces inside one box. Another interesting puzzle is given to you by a computer character. I am computer. Besides the fantastic artwork, this puzzle is kind of cool. It gives you scrambled words missing a letter, with a description of what the word is. You have to figure out the missing letter. You need to research the descriptions in the compendium they give you in the beginning of the game. Sort of a hitchhiker's guide to Zenith. It's a nice puzzle, but this one gets a bit tedious with the amount of times you need to do it. The last letter you need is a T. Well, it might surprise you that there is no T in the group of letter tiles you can choose from. So you have to use the golf tee that hopefully you picked up in the first act. Hard to miss it though. So these are the most memorable parts to me. Of course there are many other puzzles and you have to play the game if you want to see those. The game has a pretty satisfying ending with of course a win for the good team, sort of. And while you're doing that, it's revealed to you that the wager between the demons is the existence of magic in the world of Zenith. The game is far from perfect. Some challenges are too easy and some are very difficult. If you like this sort of artwork and point and click games and fantastic MIDI music, I recommend this one. I won't shame you for looking at walkthroughs when it gets too tough though. To play this game we used a 46 system with a Zeta Tomato 4 DPS motherboard. If you want to know more about this system, take a look at this video. <laughs> 